Well, hello there once again to all you YouTubers out there. Now, I know why 99% of you are watching this video, so I'm not going to waste any time, and we're going to get right down to business. So, here we have an instrument cluster from a 1988 Chrysler Daytona. Now, the reason I have this out of that car is because I was using it as a test. Because my other car, which is an 89 Chrysler Daytona, has the odometer not working correctly. I've had some other issues with it, but the odometer is the most recent thing that's failed. So I found out what it is to do the fix, and it's actually something pretty simple. So I'm going to show it to all of you as to how to do it. And to save some time and for simplicity, there are some screws that I have left out, just simply because I know you're all big boys and girls out there, and if I show you one, I know you're going to be able to figure the rest out. So first thing you got to do is get the instrument cluster out of the car. It's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is underneath the dash, there'll be a row of screws. You take them out. Then the bezel will be loose at the top. There's clips at the bottom. Just pull it out. Then you're going to find one, two, three, and four screws. You take them out. Then pull it over the side as much as you can. And I'll show you in the back here. You won't be able to see the back because the wire is not long enough. But there's two connectors. They're round. One there and one there. Pull them out. And then your instrument cluster will be free. So, once you get it out, what do you do? Well, you have to take this plastic cover off first. There's a total of five screws that hold it on. One, two, three, four, and five. You're going to need a seven millimeter socket to do that job. So I'm going to show you here. I have them all out except this one, which I just have in finger tight. They're not big screws. But you can see what they are. So you're going to take those out. And this will lift right off. Once that's off, you are exposed to the needles. See how I can move it around. Now, I would suggest you be careful with this. This one of mine, as I said, is out of a parts car. So if I do damage it, it's not in the actual car that I drive. But nevertheless, I don't want to break it. But for demonstration purposes, it works well. Then you gotta remove this plastic cover. It does not have any screws or clips. It simply will just lift off. So you can set that aside then too. Now, once that's set aside, this video is showing how to take the speedometer out and how to get into the odometer to fix it when it's not working. The other gauges I have not taken out, but they are fairly standard. You have screws throughout that have to be removed and you would take them out in the same way. So here to remove the speedometer there's three screws. There's one, two, and there is three. I have already tailed but you can see the hole down there. And you will need an extension for that. At least I haven't found any other way that you can get it out. So you want to begin by removing the screws and then the speedometer is going to be loose, but it won't actually come out. And that is because there is a connector at the bottom. Now I'm just going to set the camera down here so that I can get those screws out much faster. So, like I was saying, there is a connector at the bottom. It has three pins. It is very stiff, believe me. It you're not going to break it. Oops, there's the camera falling. It's not going to break. Um, well, I suppose if you pull it on different angles, you might break some. The key importance that I've discovered with it is pulling it straight up. Um, that's something that I think oftentimes is why stuff breaks, because people don't pull it straight up. Okay, so now you have you see how it's loose, but as I said, it doesn't come out. So what you want to do is you want to just tug it out as straight as you possibly can. So once you have that done, then the speedometer will be loose. The whole assembly, it's all one. Nothing else will fly out. Just pull it straight like that. 
This one's pretty loose because I've had it out before. Okay. So then we'll set that cluster down. And we're at just the speedometer. Now, you're going to want a solid surface for this. It can be your desk or your workbench or wherever you want it to be. But somewhere solid. And you're going to need a number one Phillips screwdriver. Now, I'm just going to show you quickly here. There's several screws you have to take out. There's one up there. There's one, two, three, four there. Five. And there's six, which my thumb is covering. Uh, no, that's seven. Yeah, there's four in the center and three around. Okay, so I'll set the camera down. I'm going to quickly take those out. And you'll be able to see then what it's like after they're out. Now, it is better if you have a magnetic bit or a screwdriver because these screws are not that big and they can go flying or get lost and actually can be hard to grab on them, especially for reassembling. Uh, I find that that's when the magnetic bit really comes in handy. Now also, while not necessary, I do think it's a better idea to just kind of keep them in order when you set them down as to where they went in. They should all be the same, however I'm thinking there might be some very slight minute differences. And if that's the case, then you don't want to mix them up because you run the risk of stripping something. So just set them down. Also another key thing to note is there's the two right screws have little washers. Um, I don't think it's a terrible thing if you did happen to lose them, but since they are there, it's better to try to keep them there uh, on the screw. So then, once you have all of these out, the last one's always tricky, once you have the last one out there, okay, then you're going to notice that this is very loose, as you can see. You're going to be able to lift that right up. Now this next part is a bit tricky. You're going to see on the side here, this is the odometer motor right here. There's a screw there, and there's a screw right here. Now that second screw I showed you, which is higher up, it's pretty easy to remove. It's a number one Phillips as well. You can remove it. Now the other one though I find is quite tricky because the plastic is kind of in the way. I have found that I'm able to move it up and out of the way and it seems to work fine. I'm just going to put this on my lap so that I can get it out easier. But once you have it out then when you put it in it will go in on a slight angle. As I said don't be rough with it. You don't want to break some but it does come out pretty easy as I just demonstrated there. So now once that's out what do you do? Well show you here. So that's loose and so is this and this will actually which is the motor pull up I can get it up here up and out. Now what you do have to watch for is all the bits and pieces and there Okay, so once that's up, what you want to do is pull off this blue gear and the white housing will come with it. Now as I said, that is the motor right there. And if you flip this over, there's a little tiny gear right here. This is your odometer gear. And it's actually so small, I don't even know, I'll set it on the desk. You might be able to kind of see how there's spaces. And that's because there's missing teeth. So that's what I've ordered for my car. And it's not cheap. You can buy them at odometergears.com. I have nothing to do with that website. That's just where I purchased it. It was uh, $29.50, I believe, Canadian, with shipping for me. 
Uh, it may be different somewhere else or for other makes of vehicles. That was for a Chrysler Dodge one at that time. And that's the little gear you have to replace. To reassemble it, you're just going to put it back in there. You want to make sure that it's flush in. It would go on two ways, but would not work the other way. There's, It's kind of like a mushroom. There's a better shot of it. You want to slide on like that. Don't slide it on the other way like that because then you can create an issue. And so then this allows you access into everything. You can see your needle, all what goes on, and the odometer. And there's all the gears there. Now I don't want to be affiliated with any illegal activity so I'm not going to demonstrate what you could or could not do with that gear. But at this point it's pretty straightforward. So Anyways, that's about it, and I hope this video has been instructional for you, and has helped you out, and please rate it, any comments, questions, concerns, you can let me know, and I think that should do it. Okay, thank you for watching.